This is the start of my hammer garden. Let's get into it. Hey you everyone, welcome back to another video by Serif. So previously, this is what I said. If the zoomers do okay, I will start adding some LPS. And I plan to add some LPS in the center rock right here. I'm planning on having a frog spawn garden. I really love the shape of frog spawn, so I'd like to add different kinds of frog spawn to the rock skate, probably in different colors as well. Um, so maybe some orange frog spawn, some green frog spawn. Yeah, just many different colors. Additionally, because frog spawns move, it will add some movement to the tank. I'm honestly still on the fence if I just want to add frog spawns alone or I would like to add hammers as well. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I have to say, after making that video, I have kind of changed my mind. I decided to get a hammer garden instead of a frog spawn garden and the reason for that is because I realized that many of the frog spawns in my area come in much larger pieces. I want to have a garden that has really small frags that I can slowly grow them out. Growing corals have always been one of the things that has lured me to this hobby and granted me the most satisfaction. So being able to choose multiple small hammer heads and to grow them out is really a plus point for me. Okay, so enough of the jibber jabber, I'm going to go straight in. So I got three small frags of hammers from my local fish shop. They are all in the branching form and I have larger success with branching forms of hammers rather than wall forms. And I wanted to get them in branching also because they will be easier to keep and frag. So they are mainly a yellow, orange and green hammer. I plan to get hammers of different colours to fill this rock and to make it into a hammer garden. So after I got them out of the bag, I dipped some of them in some coral eggs as per usual and left them inside for a good 3-5 to five minutes. Coral eggs have been working great for me in removing pests and keeping my tank healthy and pest free. I really trust it with my corals more than any other dips. So after dipping them, I do a quick rinse with tank water. And that actually helps to remove any excess Coral RX before it goes straight into the tank. I don't think that's really necessary but I do feel it's good practice to rinse the Coral Frax after dipping them because the corals might have some residual Coral RX and I want to try to remove as much of that before I actually place them into the display. So it's been over 3 days since adding them to the tank and this is how they look like right now. While their colours look great, I'm not too sure about how I feel about the water flow that they're getting. Looking at the hammers, they are a little more close than I would like and I think it might just be because of the water flow in the tank. Unfortunately, the return pump that I'm using has been set to the lower setting and I can't lower it anymore so I don't really have any idea what to do or how I can adjust the flow down. By the way, if you have been liking this video so far as a way of saying thank you, I would greatly appreciate if you could hit the like and subscribe button. One other thing I would like to mention is that for many of my corals, I kind of choose to leave the frag plug on them till they settle in the tank. Honestly, I am a bit of a OCD towards frag plugs in the tank but usually for the first month or so, I leave them on the frag plugs and the reason I do so is simple. I want to have the ability to remove the frags in the event that they need to be moved. So in my case with my hammers, this is a perfect example. I might decide to move them to another spot and having the frag, frag plugs just makes it so much easier for me to move them. Another update while talking about corals that I thought I would give is on my Zoa garden. It has been going great and as you can see, many of the Zoas are growing new heads. A problem with so many new heads is that I'm starting to get a little shade or a little shading of my Zoas at the bottom. This has resulted in some of the Zoas on the lower level stretching out for light which is never a good thing. So if you could see in this video, the utter chaos, they kind of are stretching a little bit out for light. So it is not very ideal. I don't want to frag them at this stage because it is still manageable. But the top layer is really starting to build some form of canopy on the bottom layer of Zoas. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is just leave it for the moment. I might just do some fragging once the bottom Zoas don't get enough light. But that's all up in the air, we shall see. Other than that, I'll be adding more corals as we go along and I will surely keep you guys updated. I also just want to give a big shout out and thank you to everyone who has subscribed, liked and commented on my videos. You don't know how much it means to me and I really appreciate the support and love. 
thank you for joining me on my reefing journey. With that, I think I will end my video right here. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Love your tank. Till next time. See ya.